this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to create this unique button press animation. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel. Alright, let's start with creating a unique pointer finger in After Effects. To create this leaf, we grab the pen tool and draw a line from the center. <laughs> let's activate Tidal and Action Save to see the center point. We draw a straight line while holding Shift from the center to just below the screen. Press V to switch back to the selection tool. No fill, stroke white, width around 620 pixels. If you wonder how I came up with all these weird numbers, I figured them out before recording this. Let's name the layer Sleeve. We go into the shape property of the stroke and set line cap to round cap. Then we open the taper property and set the start length to 100%. Start width to around 25%. Let's close all that again and duplicate the shape layer and rename it Hand and move it below. We reduce the stroke width to 130 pixels and move it up a bit. Then we go into the Stroke 1 property again and set Line Cap back to Butt Cap. In Taper, we set the start length to 90%, start width to 20%, start ease to 100%. We created a square hand with round edges out of a stroke. Then we duplicate this shape layer to add a finger. Let's name the layer Finger. We reduce the stroke width to around 60 pixels. We go all the way back into the Stroke 1 property and set Line Cap back to Round Cap again. And in Taper, we set Start Length to 100%, Start Ease to around 12%. To actually see the finger, Let's select the path and position it. I want this to be the right hand, so I move the path to the left edge of the hand. Move the bottom point up. I think it would be cool if the sleeve was just an outline. So let's duplicate the sleeve layer and name it Sleeve Mask. We use it as inverted alpha track mat for the sleeve layer. The finger and the hand. The sleeve disappeared completely, so we need to move the mask down a few pixels until we have an outline. Finally, we duplicate the sleeve layer once more, uncheck the invert button and switch to linear gradient stroke, colors going from black to white. Using these two blue handles we adjust the start and an end. We want the white to add some volume to the sleeve and the black to be invisible. So we turn the blending mode of the layer to screen which doesn't have any effect now, as the background is black as well. Finally, let's link all the layers to the sleeve mask, the top layer which we're going to animate. Awesome! Before we move on, let's take a quick moment and check out an awesome animation course by Domestica. In this course, you'll learn how to create motion graphics, especially for social media. Express yourself online by creating animated stickers and GIFs. The process involves illustration and animation, from concept to sketch to animation and After Effects. And finally, just as important, publishing your GIFs. I've added the link to this course and all animation courses to the description. And even better, use the code MANUALDESWASHING10 for an extra 10% off. Alright, let's add a background. We add a new solid, name it Background. Move it to the bottom of the layer stacking order. And use the Effects and Presets window to add a gradient ramp. We use a radial ramp. Move the start of ramp right to the center at 960 by 450 pixels. The end of ramp further towards the edge. Let's change the colors. The start a rather bright purple, the end a very dark purple. And let's add some ramp scatter to avoid color bending. Next, let's add the button. With no layer selected, we double click on the ellipse tool to add a round shape. A solid fill, no stroke. Fill color a very dark purple, almost black. We name the layer Button. In the Ellipse Path property, we deselect uniform scaling, reduce the size to 250 by 250 pixels. Move it below the hand in the layer stacking order. Let's move our pointer finger out of the way for now. We duplicate the button shape, move it below and name it Light1. Increase the size to 285 pixels. We could have activated uniform scaling instead of typing in the numbers twice. 
All right, let's use a linear gradient fill. Adjust the start and end. Colors, a bright pink and a bright blue. We set the opacity of the layer to 75%. Then add turbulent displays and adjust some of the settings. Amount 45, size 35. We animate the evolution with an expression. We click on the stopwatch while holding Alt or Option if you're using a Mac. Then add time asterisk 50 to the expression field, which means the evolution changes by 50 degrees per second. Then we add a glow effect. Set the glow radius to 30. We duplicate it and set the glow radius to 100, which creates a nice shine. We set the blending mode of the layer to lighten. Duplicate the layer, change the gradient fill colors and the amount in the turbulent displays effect, as well as the random seed in the evolution options. We repeat that one more time. Let's check it out. Awesome. Next, we add an adjustment layer. Name it noise and add noise. Amount 3%, no color noise to avoid color bending. When we press the button, we want something to happen, right? In order to control that easily, we add another adjustment layer, name it Light Control, and go to Expression Controls and add a slider control. Next, we select the Light 1 layer and add CC Scale Wipe. And we want to control the stretch with the slider control. So we select the adjustment layer, then open the CC Scale Wipe effect and link the stretch property to the slider control. And guess what's going to happen? Cool, right? By the way, if you right click on the slider property and go to edit value, you can adjust the range. 10 is enough, I think. We animate the direction with the time expression again. We add an expression, add time asterisk 50. Which looks like this. We copy and paste the CC scale wipe effect to the other two light layers. Now they all behave exactly the same. Let's open the expressions again of one of the light layers by pressing E twice and add a different start value here in the direction property, plus 130 degrees. Then let's choose one of the other two layers and add plus 240, for example. Awesome. Let's animate the button. We press S to open the scale property, then set a scale keyframe at 20 frames. At 27 frames, we reduce the scale to 80%. At 36 frames, we set it back to 100. Then we open the graph editor to adjust the speed graph. We slow down the beginning and the end by dragging the points to the zero line and pulling the handles inwards and the middle part as well. Awesome. Then we set the slider back to zero, add a slider control keyframe at 27 frames, when the scale is down to 80%. Press U to see it in the timeline, then we set it to 7 at 36 frames. We select both keyframes, right click, go to Keyframe Assistant and add Easy Ease. Finally, we add a position keyframe to the sleeve mask layer at 10 frames. Move it out of the screen. We move it back in, pointing to the center of the button at 20 frames. That's at the time of the first scale keyframe. We move it slightly up at 27 frames. Then back out of the screen at 40 frames. After Effects auto-generated busy motion paths, which we don't want right now. So we select all four position keyframes, right click on one of them and go to keyframe interpolation and set everything to linear. Awesome. Let's open the graph editor and smooth the animation. Add Easy Ease, which does part of the work. Then we fine tune the curves some more. Check out the free project file to see how I animated the finger. 
and join my newsletter for more content. It'll help you to improve at motion design. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye, guys.